Well, good morning. It is uh, day two in the PCT. And I'm just uh, stepping away from camp because there's other people there, so I don't want to wake anybody up. It's uh, about 5.30 right now. And the sun is up, but I don't see it, so it's bright. The weather is cleared. It's partly cloudy. Absolutely gorgeous. Let me just turn around here so you can see what it looks like. The camp is uh, back there. You see somebody's tent. That's not my tent. My tent's a little farther back. And uh, yeah, so I'm feeling good. Um, the only, let's see, my feet aren't sore. That was the big issue last time I tried the PCT is my feet were sore at the end of every day and doing much better today. Legs are good. My shoulders are a little tight from uh, carrying a little more weight, I think. I uh, woke up this morning at five. It's doing pretty good for me. And uh, goal is to get out, get hiking by six. So the big goal of today is to get to Canada, tag the Canadian border, turn around, come back. So the border is about 14, 15 miles. I think I did 14 and a half actually last night when I looked at the data. Um, so something like 15 miles to go, but it's the, uh, the tough 15 miles. Uh, let's get some mountains in there. And uh, so we've got some, we've got Rock Pass, uh, which is uh, very steep. Apparently still has snow on it. I've done it before, but not when there was snow. And there's Woody Pass, which is also snowed in, and uh, something called Devil's Staircase, which is one of the steepest grades on all of the PCT, and apparently also has snow. Um, so I don't have a lot of snow experience. I do have a nice axe and micro spikes, but I'm no mountaineer, so I'll be taking that very slowly. Um, I may leave ahead of, I think there were, five people maybe, five tents that I counted in that tent site. And I think there were mostly people who I met coming up from Hearts Pass, I'm guessing, maybe a few people going back. But uh, anyway, I, if I'm there alone, I'll probably, probably wait until uh, somebody else shows up. Um, but they may catch up with me before I get there. I'm not a particularly fast hiker. Let's look at this, Let's see what we've got. clouds forming over there. I think it's been uh, warming, sunny and warming. So next few days should be uh, possibly even hot leading up to the 4th of July. So I'm going to tag the border, head south, go as far as probably Stahican, which is 70, 80 miles. Uh, not in one day, of course. And uh, maybe take a zero there, depending on how I feel. But I do have to go in to this uh, small resort town of Stahican and pick up a package. Uh, which has more food, so I'm sending myself packages so I don't have to buy everything in these uh, in these small towns, some of which charge very uh, high prices for things like protein bars and stuff like that. So so I did mail myself a bunch of packages. My mom is going to mail me some more. I left some with her. And uh, yeah, so that's the plan for today. Let's finish off with a little bit of views. I got to pack up my tent. This is looking back where I came. I'm heading this way.
So I'm here at Rock Pass, looking over at uh, Woody Pass. Woody Pass would be there. And this is the trail somewhere. Dips down, does uh, some switchbacks. It looks like we have some snow, but not as much as I thought. So we'll be slow going for some of it. Woody Pass looks pretty snowy, but a lot of the trail is exposed and melted out. It doesn't look too bad, but I have to take my time. Okay, sign says trail abandoned. So we don't want to go that way. That's the old route, the high route. We're going to go to the switchbacks, which are farther down here. So let's go to the switchbacks. Take the low route. We're coming down that. That's a little sketchy. Rocks and such. And you can see the switchbacks back there. And this is the way ahead. Got across some snow. And I think I saw a hiker down there. It's probably it's probably Joel. Who I met. Let's see if I can zoom in to where he is. There he is. Uh, so there's one hiker who left camp ahead of me. That's probably Joel. These uh, patches of snow were pretty slushy. There's boot track already, but it's not very firm. So I've been uh, kicking steps. So far so good. That's where we're gonna go. So this section looks a little sketchier. I haven't brought my ice axe out yet, but I think I want it in my hand. Okay, I made it through the uh, first uh, sketchy pass. Took off my backpack. Uh, let's see, if I turn around, you can see where I came from up there. Crossed all that. Uh, it was pretty good. It's kind of fun. I did slip once. My downward leg uh, slipped out from under me. And I fell on my butt. But uh, I was anchored in with the ice axe, so I was glad I had the ice axe. Didn't slip or roll beyond that one foot. Recovered pretty easily. So, uh, thank you YouTube for teaching me the technique. Don't have a lot of practice, but I'm getting it now. So, the next... There's a little bit of snow there. It doesn't look as bad. It's melting out lower. And then we cross. It looks like dirt and rock trail, normal trail. And then when we go up to uh, Woody Pass, which I think, yeah, I think is that. It's up there. I'm going to have to climb that snow. Let's see, right there. So I think I'm going to have to climb that chute. Uh, probably has switchbacks too. Don't quite remember. Uh, I was up there once before, but uh, it wasn't snowing. So I will figure it out when I get there. But uh, snow is uh, pretty cooperative. It's slushy, not icy. That helps a lot. And the boot pack helps. I've got my uh, micro spikes on. You can see my... Let's see. Let's see these. Got the spikes on. And... Where's my marker? Where's my axe? My axe is down here. I can't show you in action because I need my hands when filming, but this is my ice axe so I don't stab myself I'm trying to show you. Okay, so that's it. And of course, we got these beautiful views, which I'm mostly ignoring because I gotta watch the trail, but I'll let you see them. And we're gonna continue on. Okay, looks like I'm back on terra firma. Cross most of the ice. I need to most of the snow. I need to cross uh, between now and the valley before I start start back up. And uh, since 
successfully navigated, not circumnavigated, maybe super navigated, went over the snow fields. It was kind of fun, challenging, but fun. And uh, coming up on a switchback here, you might be able to hear the uh, roaring river below. Catches the uh, snow melt, the rock fall, and the occasional hiker. But what do we say to death? Not today! Unless, of course, this is found footage. In which case, please delete this track. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, still coming down. Having successfully managed the uh, snow crossings in this beautiful area in the North Cascades, which uh, some people call the American Alps. I've never been to the Alps, but I want to go. It's on the bucket list. If it's anything like this, I definitely want to go. But I've been thinking today and before on the idea of the sublime. Uh, as opposed to, say, beauty. And this idea of the sublime, which has a sense of, uh, I think, awe as part of it. I definitely feel that out here. So, beauty, although this is beautiful, and if uh, these pictures are coming through, uh, you might think they're beautiful, and they are. But uh, beauty is something you can put a frame around. You can, uh, beauty has a sort of distancing effect. Uh, beautiful landscape, beautiful piece of art, beautiful person, somewhat distancing, somewhat uh, almost unapproachable. Uh, so we have a sense of subject and object. When we think about beauty, we're, we're viewing the beauty, like you watching this video, but it's different if you're out here hiking it. You've got the uh, obviously the kinesthetic sense you're moving, your heart rate's up, you know, you're feeling all the emotions and uh, all, the, all the kinesthetic, you know, stuff that's happening with your body as you're, you know, moving through the landscape. And uh, I'm gonna pause here because I got a, a short little crossing of snow and I'll pick up on this idea that I've been thinking about. I just crossed that little snow field back there. Just didn't want to be talking while I was walking over the snow, but on the idea of the sublime, I'm not exactly sure where it came from, uh, the idea or the term. I think it was a uh, Greek, Greek or Roman philosophers talking about rhetoric, as they often did. Longinus being one of the authors, I think, maybe even coined the term sublime, and the idea originally was something about, now don't fact check me on this, because, or maybe you should, I don't have Wikipedia, I don't have internet, so this is from memory. But I think uh, the idea was that a great oration or speech can transport, can transport you to another place or time or emotionally. We think of uh, Pericles' uh, reputed funeral oration that Thucydides uh, wrote about, may have made up in his Peloponnesian War book. Uh, more familiar to us would be the uh, Lincoln's Gettysburg's Address, which is probably based at least, or at least inspired by the funeral oration of Pericles. Uh, memorable speech, if you were there, even if you weren't there. There's something sublime to the words and the meaning of what was happening at Gettysburg. So that was the original idea of sublime, and then I want to say probably 17, late 1700s, early 1800s, something like that. Uh, a number of uh, Englishmen uh, were doing what they call the Grand Tour, which I've done, sort of. It's uh, You go to Rome and you visit the sites and Parthenon and the Colosseum and all that stuff and and uh, amaze it, you know, you, you feel small, you get a sense of what the, uh, how old the world is and civilization, all that things, all those things. Anyway, so there was, uh, I don't know, five or six of these Englishmen separately went on these uh, Grand Tours and one of the things they did as you do, I'm going to switch hands here, as you do when you're in Europe, I suppose, is, uh, how do we do this? There we go. Is 
you uh, hike in the Alps, as I would do. I was thinking about the Alps, and this is, as I say, the American Alps, or some people call it that. Probably some resonance there. And uh, hiking in the Alps, they, they had this feeling that they called sublime, which was something, something different. It was beauty and terror. They used the word terror. Terror and horror. Uh, which is kind of odd. Um, although, you know, crossing those ice, ice uh, fields, snow fields, mostly snow, uh, it's a lot of what we call type 2 fun now. It's just, you know, maybe it's not fun when you're doing it, but it's fun to look back on. And, uh, but it's hard. And, uh, you know, and potentially dangerous, and you get your adrenaline up and all that, and uh, a little bit of death-defying, because you know if you fall, that might be it. Uh, so there's that sense of terror, or horror, I think some of them said, and beauty. So that's part of what the sublime became for the uh, Europeans back in those days. I think uh, Edmund Burke wrote a, wrote a book, I read maybe in college, on uh, beauty and the sublime. He talked about that idea of terror and horror, and also there's a sense of not just majesty, but it makes you feel small, you know, and there's a sort of ego death, you know, there's a terror that, you know, maybe the body might die, but uh, you kind of lose your ego out here, to some extent. You know, I'm regaining a little bit of it by putting myself in a video. I guess that's a bit of vanity ego, but but there's a sense when the camera's not filming, there's a loss of ego, which is an interesting and, I think, rewarding experience to take you out of a society and who you think you are in the world. And who are you really outside of the context of what the world has created, civilization and so forth. And uh, I was pounding my tent stakes with a rock last night, thinking, uh, you know, they didn't have tent stakes back in the Stone Ages, but they certainly were pounding things with rocks. So I was reconnecting with my Stone Age ancestors using a rock as a hammer. But uh, anyway, so Edmund Burke wrote about this, and I don't remember all of what he said in his book, uh, short book. I know uh, Immanuel Kant picked up the idea of the sublime in one of his, uh, uh, it's not critique of, it was, he wrote the Critique of Pure Reason, Critique of something else, and the Critique of Pure Judgment, I think it's the one where he talks about the sublime. Anyway, I've been feeling a lot of that, you know, a little bit of awe, the occasional moment of terror, mostly beauty, in the sense that, uh, you know, I'm small in the world in the universe and yeah, it's a good thing to remind yourself of once in a while and yeah that's about all my thoughts on the sublime at the moment that I was remembering some of what I read and some of what I felt and trying to connect it connecting not only myself to nature but also to what other people have felt and written about in times past so that's my thought for the day Went up on uh, Woody Pass here. Conditions are good. No snow on the trail for this section. There's a couple camping spots up there. I imagine they're pretty snow free. Probably snow on the other side though. Because I think we're crossing over to a north facing slope. We get to uh, Devil's uh, Staircase. Here we're just doing switchbacks to get up to the pass. Don't see any snow yet. So, so far so good.
just cross that snow fields back there. Mix of patchy snow and rock scree. Also snow has melted, but some of it's still holding on for a couple days at least. Did not use my spikes this time or my axe, ice axe because the uh, foot wells in the snow were were pretty deep and easy to step into and just use the snow baskets on my trekking pole. Okay, I just came off the stairway, not the uh, stairway to heaven, but the other place. So the, the uh, devil's stairway, and uh, it was hard. It was hard, but the last part was fun because I, uh, you can see those uh, slide marks there. I did my first glissade, which is sliding on your butt. That was fun. Okay, I made it to Castle Pass, which is about uh, 3.5 miles, I think, from the border. And so the plan is, uh, by the way, I'm moving around because the mosquitoes are everywhere. So the um, plan is to slack pack, uh, which means leave some of my stuff here and take only what I need. So you can see back there, there's my tent, climbed my spot, I have some socks drying, have a lighter pack, most of my heavy stuff I'm keeping here and uh, going up to the border and back about seven miles and then I'll have a camping spot for tonight so that is the plan